We're coming to you live from the K2 Arena in Crawley for the 36th annual Kyokushin Karate Knockdown Tournament. Combatants have come from all corners of the globe and have been separated into five different weight classes to determine who's the best. On this show, you'll be watching the highlights from the knockout stages and the finals of the men's and women's lightweight weight class. In only moments, we'll be starting the show with the action from the women's lightweight quarterfinals. Okay, so the first of the women's lightweight quarterfinals up here. We have Lambrex from Holland to the left of your screen uh, versus Roxanne North Missouri of Great Britain. Some strong punches from both fighters here. Oh, it's a good, good roll kick there from Lambrex. Yeah, an excellently executed roll kick there, catching Roxanne around the back of the head. Oh, and she's doing it again. Roxanne didn't learn from the first time. And it's been caught again, which was score of Wazari. She really set her up with the punches then, dropped her hands and then hit her with a roll kick. Yeah, a very strong looking Lambrex advances to the semi-final. The second of our women's lightweight quarterfinals is Meskarskine from Ireland versus Emma Markwell of Great Britain. We see Meskarskine there punching Markwell to the face, which is obviously a foul technique. Emma, some good combinations there, good punches, kicks, really moves well. Typical a lot of the British fighters. It looks there that Meskarskine starting to feel the pace and slowing down a bit. At the end of the first round, the judges award that a draw, so we'll go into a two minute second round. Emma's techniques here are really crisp. She's really wearing her opponent down. Oh, good roll kick there. Yeah, an excellently trademark technique of Mark Wells, the roll kick, catching Meskarskine off guard and earning the Ippon one point victory. Let's take a look at that again. As you see, complete technique catching her square on the chin and earning her place into the women's semi final. Yeah, you can see there, she looked really groggy as she went down. That was a superb technique there from Markwell. So our third quarterfinal to the left of the screen is the multiple Russian champion Maria Lapina versus Anne-Marie Jardine from Wales. Lapina's won just about everything there is to win. Former Russian champion, world champion, European champion. She's a really strong competitor. Very explosive punches and techniques, as we see there. Catches her with a kick to the, to the midriff. Yeah, it's really uh, indescribable how much strength Lapina has. She can uh, pick her opponents apart, specialise in the body techniques, which obviously no protection there. Some great punch, finishing off with a kick. Puts Jardine down, earning Lapina a spot in the semi finals. Yeah, she's definitely one of the favourites today. She's looked strong in all the rounds and pretty much steamrolled her opponent there. So, the left of our screen representing Wales is Lisa Heath with the red tag versus. Joanna Rapp from Sweden in the green belt. Both fighters here deciding to fight very close quarters, very technical. Heath is stepping out with some punches here and throws in a good knee. The end of the first round, that sees that a draw, so we're going to a two minute second round extension. And despite weighing less than 60 kilograms, all these women, lots of strength, lots of power. Lots of heart and spirit here as both fighters look to step it up 
and that place on the podium in the semi-finals. And Raps really putting on the pressure. A good knee that sends to Lisa Heath back. Followed up with some good Mawasha Gary kicks to the ribs. But Lisa's doing well to hold her ground here. Yeah, she's really trying to push forward here, wants to get that decision at the end. And then after the second round, it's also a draw, so we're now going to go into a third round extension where a winner will have to be decided. So yeah. this is where a big test of character, big test of heart for both these fighters. Yeah, this is really a war of attrition now. He's trying to just push forward, get the judges' decision. You'd be surprised if you see a knockout. It's who can work harder and who wants it more. And it looks like Lisa Heath has got a little bit more left in the tank. Rap looks like she's puffed out a bit. And Heath keeping the pressure on there. This will be a close decision. Oh, looks like a split decision here. Which way is it going to go? And the referee awards that. So it's two flags for each fighter, leaving the referee as the fifth option to give the flag to Lisa Heath, who will earn her place in the semi-finals. Okay, so semi-final number one is Lambrex from Holland to the left of the screen versus Markwell of Great Britain wearing the white sash. Two former champions here going against it, both trying to win it again this year. It really shows a good pool of fighters at the 2012 tournament. We've got multiple champions, people coming to defend their titles. It's very much an attractive tournament for the whole of Europe, if not the world. And the fight would just stop there. It seems Markwell caught Lambrex with a low blow to the groin area. He should receive a, a formal warning for that. Yeah, that was close. It looked like she might have caught in the leg, but I think, uh, yeah, it was given a, a warning by the judges. Unfortunately, the judges don't have the benefit of the replays like we do. But that won't phase Markwell. She'll get stuck in, get the job at hand done. But as you can see, both women, very strong, very fast, good three, four punch combinations, working, working the body. And that's a close to the first round. I think we'll see that given a draw. There wasn't much in between these two great fighters. Yeah, Emma's really moving well here. She's hitting her with some strong punches, followed up by low kicks and knees. Really good movement here. I think she's getting on top as this fight's going on. But with Lambrest looking to defend her 2011 title, she's going to bring the fight to Markwell. This is going to be a, a fiercely contested second round. Again, both fighters not giving much ground. Lambrest trying the roll kick that she... Uh, executed perfectly in the quarterfinal to no avail. Oh, good technique there by Emma again for, for a roll kick there, just catches Lambrex. It's typical, Lambrex tries one of herself, then Markwell answers back with one of her own. Perfect technique on show here in this semi-final. That's the second time that technique's come off for Emma today. Both of them have been superbly executed. So with that roll kick, catching on the button, Markwell earns her place into the final, beating the reigning 2011 champion on the way. It was a perfect technique, deserving a place in the final. The second of our women's lightweight semi-finals under 60 kilogram category sees multiple Russian champion, former world champion Lapina of of Russia with the red sash versus Lisa Heath of Wales. Yeah, you can see the power here of Lapina. She's really moving around and hitting her hard. I think Lisa Marie Heath is struggling to stay there. Yeah, and Lapina's just caught her with a body punch then. It's relentless pressure from Lapina. Every punch she throws is, is there to do the job. And it uh, seems that she's just got too much strength for Heath, but... Foul technique there. Lapina seems all right. They'll just restart this. That's the thing with Lapino, once she gets going, she can literally steamroll her opponent off the map. And unfortunately for Lisa Heath, it just looks like Lapino's got too much strength here today. She's going all out to try and win this tournament. Yeah, Heath needs to stop her with either a bizarre air rip on at the moment, but doing that to Lapino is nigh on impossible because she, she just ploughs forward. She throws so many techniques and they're all so powerful and crisp, it's, it's hard. And as we thought, that's quite a one-sided semi-final, but Lisa Heath put on a very spirited display there up against the very experienced, world-renowned Lapina of Russia, who will now earn her place in the final versus Emma Markwell. What will be it?
coming up after the break, Russia's Maria Lepina takes on Great Britain's Emma Markwell in the women's lightweight final. Coming up later on the show, the men's lightweight division battles it out at the 36th annual knockdown competition held here at the K2 Arena in Crawley. But now, Russia's Maria Lapina takes on Great Britain's Emma Markwell in the women's lightweight final. So the 2012 women's under 60 kilogram final. Emma from Great Britain, Emma Markwell looking very focused with her coach Shion David Pickfall. As Lapina from Russia makes her way to the mat, looking very determined as ever. She's here to do a job. She's going to give Emma a lot to answer for and what's going to be a very, very well contested final, Alan. Yeah, this should be a very good final. These two have fought before and it was very, very close. Lapina has won pretty much everything there is to win, been around the circuit for many, many years and Emma's one of the top up and coming fighters. So we're expecting a really good tight fight. So here we have the women's 2012 final, Great Britain versus Russia. Emma Markwell wearing the red sash, Lapina of Russia with the white sash. I think one of Emma's tactics here has got to be moving well. She's taller than her, she's got good kicks, she needs to make use of them. Absolutely, the height advantage could be there. She can throw a few high kicks up, maybe catch Lapina off guard. That's a good chance to try and get the knockout in this thing because Lapina is very much going to be on Emma for the whole of this fight. Yeah, Lapina is going to try and close her down, get right in and try and just keep throwing those body punches and combinations. Very tough, tough competitor, Lapina. But Markwell's doing well here, holding yeah. her ground, working good combinations, working high-low, following with inside low kicks. A very technical fight to Markwell, up against the brute force and the perseverance of a fighter like Lapina's. Yeah, she's moving well, Markwell, here. She's, she's moving and she's also blocking a lot of those punches. She's getting in at close quarters, but she's really holding her ground here. Some good low kicks thrown there by Markwell as well as Lapina. She's just relentless with her punches. She just keeps going. Markwell's doing well here to hold her, hold her ground, using her footwork to great effect, trying to evade the punches off Lapina, but Lapina will just keep coming at you. She's one of these fighters that's just got fifth gear all the way. Coming towards the end of the round here, they both probably put a late surge. Yeah, it's very even for I think this round would definitely be called a draw. Yeah, unless anyone can pull something special out. And that's the klaxon that signifies the end of the first round. Nothing in between these two great fighters. I think we'll see the judges award this fight a draw and we'll go into a two-minute second round extension. As, as we predicted, the first round, nothing between these two fighters. So we're into round two. And again, both fighters starting very strong. Every technique's thrown with determination. And again, we just see Lapina. The pressure of Lapina is astounding. It's what's won her so many titles across the world and made her one of the best female lightweight fighters the sport's ever seen. Yeah, she, her punches are so crisp. She moves in, she drags the leg out of the way, hits people with combinations. But we know Markwell, she's a tough competitor herself. She's been in some fierce battles, even though she's still only young, she's had some big fights on big stages around the world. So she'll be here to give, give her all as well. Yeah, what we see in this tournament as well is Emma's 
scored uh, Ippon and Wazari with a roll kick and also dropped someone with a punch. So she can certainly uh, knock people out. Again, not much separating these fighters. They're blow for blow, trading off. Fierce punches, fierce low kicks, all taking their toll on both fighters. Yeah, Emma's doing well here. She's not backing down to her. She's she's staying at good range. She's either been very close where Lupina can't use her power or just out of range where she's a little bit too far to be here. The conditioning of these women is, is incredible. Taking all of these blows, bare knuckle to the ribs, the kicks to the legs. They put in their training, they toughen their bodies, get their conditioning right, which is why they can take, both take each other's punishment. It's really going to be something special here to, to get this title. Yeah, these fighters have already had three or fights, three or four fights to get to this stage. So it's the, it's the injuries that build up throughout the day as well. You see Lapine there coming in with a high front kick, but Markwell does well to evade and throws back one of her own. Again, both fighters trying to, trading off on the inside. Lapina working her hook punches to the body with great effect. But Markwell answering back, some good strong knees there to give Lapina something to think about. Yeah, she's using her knees well, keeping her away every time Lapina's coming in. I think that needs to be, be a plan of her, throwing knee in, just drive Lapina back. Well, Markwell trying that roll kick that she's used to great effect throughout this tournament. But on Lapina, it's going to have to be something special. She's such an experienced fighter. Yeah. Very difficult to knock out. I think that was a tired one at the end there. I think towards the end of that second round, that probably just bought her a bit of time. She really needs to breathe in here, take in that air and get ready for the next round because I think that one will be given a draw. And as we predicted, the second round also awarded a draw. So we're now going to a third round. This is really going to test the spirit and conditioning of both of these fighters. It's going to get very tough out there. Lots of uh, punches traded, lots of kicks traded. It takes its toll. It's who's going to be the first to break first. Yeah, I think Emma's got to start using her legs again. She's using her knees a lot and she's throwing more roundhouse kicks to the midriff there. I think that's, that needs to be a technique. She'll get wore down if she keeps standing there trying to trade with Lapina. I think Emma's doing that well now. She's moving. Lapina does potentially look like she's tiring a little bit, but she's kept up such a pace throughout this fight. It's very much going to be a battle of fitness, battle of heart here, as both fighters giving their all. And as you can see, there's nothing between them. Both trading off very good, strong techniques, both taking the best of what each other's throwing at. And Emma Markwell to the left with the red sash of Great Britain versus Lapina of Russia in this women's lightweight 2012 final. Yeah, she's hitting her with a few times a left low kick there, Emma. She needs to keep working on that and trying to slow Lapina down. Again, she's certainly taking the snap out of Lapina, working that leg, giving her the knees. Lapina now s slowed down a little bit where Markwell's pace. And still, again, working that left low kick. It's working to great effect. Hopefully that s slows Lapina down. Now Emma Markwell can start picking off her own combinations. Yeah, it's very tight. It was always going to be the fact that Lapina would sort of stalk her opponent, and that's just how she is. So, and you know, e Emma moves around well, so it was all, always going to be a case of Lapina advancing and Emma moving and picking her off. So we're down to the last 20 seconds of the third round here of this women's lightweight final. And again, both fighters still going at it. Markwell doing good of her footwork there to evade what Lapina's throwing. Both trading off, it's blow for blow at the moment. Still, it's very difficult to call between these two fantastic fighters. Yeah, this is a point where they've really got to dig in. They're both very, very tired, but both want, both want this a lot. So the Claxon sees the end of the third round. If this remains a draw, it will go into a fourth round, Entro Zen, which means sudden victory, which means a decision will have to be made at the end of the fourth round. Yeah, I couldn't personally split that. I wouldn't be surprised if we have another draw. Yeah, all four judges and the referee award this a draw. So now we go into the fourth round, Enches End Sudden Death Victory. A decision will have to be made. I have a feeling that these two could fight all day and all night. They're both such great competitors, both so fit, so strong. But a winner will be determined within the next two minutes. Yeah, it was good roll kick there by Emma there. She wasn't too far away from catching that, nearly caught the peanut. It's that last two minutes there, try and give everything you've got and really push out for it. 
Yeah, there's the British title at stake here, so both fighters need to really up their game and go for this. Emma working her kicks well, maybe going for the knockout. But Lapina sticking to her traditional style of resilient punches, not giving Markwell much space, but Markwell doing well with her footwork, catching some good low kicks. But again, Lapina, just like a train, she'll keep coming at you. You've got hit with everything and the kitchen sink. Yeah, she's just relentless. She just keeps playing forward here. But Emma's doing the right thing. She's hitting her with knees. She's hitting her with inside low kicks just to slow her down and take the pace out of her. Emma's looking a lot sharper here in this fourth round. Working her footwork well, some good kicks. Where Lapina just sticking to her good punches, trying to wear Markwell down, but the clock's ticking. But you think here with the techniques that Markwell's throwing, she might just edge this. She's yeah. the busier of the two fighters. Yeah, I think in this last round especially, she's thrown a lot more kicks that seem to have shifted Lapina a bit. And I think that tactic's really working. And again, they're just trying to go in with that inside axe kick. Still looking for the knockout. We're in the fourth round and Markwell's still throwing high kicks. Showing a great level of fitness and great techniques. Yeah, Markwell looks like she's stepped up a piece here as well. She's moving around quicker. She's throwing good punches and kicks. I think she's getting a second win for about last 30 seconds. It really is. It's going to come down to who's been the busier of the two fighters in this sudden death final. Yeah, it's been so close. Whoever can really put in a surge here and push the opponent back is going to gain sway with the judges. Again, even in the end of this fourth round, Markwell's still trying that roll kick. Unfortunately, it's got not great effect, but she's still showing that she's she's the fitter, stronger fighter, throwing a lot more techniques, being the busier out the two, and that might just edge her this this title here. Yes, yeah, this, this is working well. That Emma's definitely looking the more lively here, and Lapina is, I think, that continuous pressure that she's putting on has caught up with her a bit. Just a glancing blow there from Markwell, just caught Lapina in her face, so the referee stopped the fight and given Markwell a warning. So last 10 seconds here, the title on the line. Who wants it more? Yeah, it's all about Hart now, who really got to just drive. No, I think Markwell was the busier of the two fighters in that fight. Finishing strong, standing there strong. The difference in the body language could tell us what's going to happen. Yeah, it was a great final round from uh, Markwell there. She really, really did everything she needed to at the end. And Markwell gets the flag decision. Emma Markwell, a great Britain, wins the 2012 lightweight final. Yeah, that was a fantastic final there. Four rounds, hardly anything between them there. But I think Emma definitely at the edge there, putting a massive fourth round. And deservedly got the decision. You can see how much it means to her there. And the ladies, that's a new one, under 60 kilos. Join third place. Lisa Marie Heath, Mountain Ash. <laughs> and Priscilla Lambreski from Holland IFK. <laughs> Join first. In second place, Maria Lapina from Usher IFK. Coming up after the break, we'll return to the K2 Arena at Crawley for the 36th annual Kyokushin Karate Knockdown Tournament.
coming up in the show, the men's lightweight class final. But now, the knockout stages to determine who will earn themselves a place in the men's lightweight division finals. So the first quarter final in the men's lightweight division, which is under 70 kilograms. To the right of the screen wearing the white sash is uh, Great Britain's Spencer Bennett versus Venev of Bulgaria. Two fighters here starting off pretty well matched, both of them moving round, just sort of sizing each other up at the moment. And Bennett very well known for his fierce power and his punches. Yeah, Bennett's an aggressive fighter, really likes to take the fight to his opponent. But Venev here is showing that he's got a fair bit of that himself. And it's no surprise there that at the end of the first round we see a draw awarded, so they'll go into a second two-minute round. So both men went for it in the first round, now they'll be sizing each other a bit more. Yeah, I think Bennett's going to step it up in this round. He's sort of sized up his opponent more and, and now will be looking to get on top and try and get the decision. So after a draw in the second round, the decision is confirmed by the amount of boards broken in the Tanishawari event. And with Spencer Bennett of Great Britain having broken more boards, he advances to the semi-final. The second of our semi-finals, to the left of your screen wearing the red sash, is Wales' Liam Longregan, representing Great Britain, versus Wesley Janssen from Holland. Yeah, Wesley likes a spectacular, he's got very fast legs, went for a roll kick and just saw a high kick there. Wesley well known for his knockout power with his kicks and the speed, very acrobatic fighter and a massive arsenal of techniques at his disposal. Whereas Leon Lambregan, known for his resilience, it takes a lot to wear him down. Yeah, Leon's very fit and will, has a non-stop file of fighting, but is also capable of knocking his opponent out. As we see there, Wesley doing the jumping roundhouse kicks, very much working his lengthy range. But Leon taking the fight to Wesley here, really stepping up the pace. Lots of bunches, but again, Wesley's kicks too strong, knocking Leon from balance. Oh, close with an axe kick there by Wesley, that was good. But as we know, Leon, he only knows one thing, and that's to attack. He's a very, very resilient fighter, and he just goes all out. And Wesley just soaking up there, answering back the combinations of his own, and that sees us at the end of the second round. Yeah, that was a close fight there, looking like that could well be a draw. It's what the judges are looking for, really, whether they're going to favour technique or the resilience. Oh, and it's two flags to Wesley. Referee's ordered first to a draw. And the decision to Wesley Janssen, it was a very, very close decision there. Yeah, I think that was a little bit harsh on Leon then. He could have well looked like that could have gone another round and I thought there wasn't much in it but a very good tight fight nonetheless up next from Great Britain is the very exciting fighter Darren Stringer with the red sash versus yeah. Yuri Shushkov of Russia yeah Darren's a former champion of this won this tournament in 2004 and 2009 and Shishkov has run the Russian Championships. So you've got two very experienced, very decorated fighters. So it's no surprise that there's nothing between them in the first round and we get underway with the second round. Darren's got fantastic movements. He's very powerful as well. And that's basically, he's got every technique in the book. Axe kicks, low kicks, strong punches. He can pretty much knock anyone out with any technique. Looks like a draw there after the second round. Now they're going to go to boards. So the person who has broken the most boards will advance to the semi-final. We're just waiting for the judges to confirm who this might be. Yeah. 
So unfortunate for Great Britain's Darren Stringer, he loses out by the Tamashawari event with Shushkov having broken three more boards. Here we've got the exciting fight of Jafarov of Azerbaijan versus Solomenikov. Sol Solomenikov has won numerous titles around Russia and Europe and he's a very strong Russian opponent. Jafarov wearing the red tag, a very resilient, tough fighter. He can absorb a lot of punishment and dish it out on his own as well. Yeah, there's been good technique there. There's been a very strong team from Azerbaijan fighting today and there's always a strong Russian team here and this is no exception. Solomenikov looks to wear his opponents down with punches. He does a technique where he steps to the side and tries to hit him with a roll kick. He's already caught opponent with that here today and he'll probably try it again at one point in this fight. And remember guys, this is bare knuckle, full contact body punches, just showing the resilience of these guys and the conditioning of them to absorb all of this punishment. So no surprise that a draw was awarded after the first round, so the referee gets us underway with the second round, two minute round. Oh, there was that technique there from Solomenikov going for a roll kick. It's not far off. He could have connected there. Looks like he did, but not enough to send Jafarov down. Jafarov does just enough to evade that technique. But at the end of the second round, the judges have awarded the fight to the Russian, Solomenikov, who seemed to be a little bit busier, do a little bit more work, a bit more fitness. Let's just see him edge his way into the semi-finals. Okay, so here we have, to the left of the screen is Great Britain's Spencer Bennett versus a very exciting Wesley Janssen from Holland. Spencer known for his tough power punches, Wesley known for his flamboyant kicks and his acrobatic jumping roundhouses, rolling kicks, but Bennett taking the fight there to Wesley, punching him off the mat to show that he is probably a bit stronger. Yeah, I agree with that. I think. Bennett's definitely stronger, but then Janssen is the lighter fighter who moves around, who's got a lot of knockout techniques. Uh, Spencer's going to have to be aware of, uh, of Janssen's kicks. And again, as we see there, Spencer, he's bullying Wesley there, punching him off the map. Very fierce combination. It looks like Wesley may have had enough there. Some of the judges have awarded that with the point. Yeah, I think the body punches there by Bennett is really surprising Janssen, and he's, I think he's been shocked how hard he's been hit. It's the true grit of Bennett's punches versus the flamboyancy of Wesley's kicks. And as we thought, the referee has decided to award that fight with an Ippon to Spencer Bennett, meaning he'll advance to the final. And for Wesley, he'll have to settle for a third place finish. But a fight to watch for the future, that's for sure. Coming up after the break, Russia's Eugenie Selimnikov takes on Great Britain's Spencer Bennett to decide who's the winner of the men's lightweight division. And now, Russia's Eugenie Selimnikov takes on Great Britain's Spencer Bennett to decide who's the winner of the men's lightweight division. kilograms lightweight final 2012 it's the British Championships at stake and no one wants it more than Spencer Bennett representing Great Britain but he's got this chap in his way Solomenikov of Russia a very decorated fighter very tough he's knocked out a couple of opponents today and he'll be looking to do the same to Spencer Bennett in the final yeah this is going to be a really tight fight here 
Spencer's looked really strong all day, but Solomenikov has looked a very strong fighter today. He's knocked numerous opponents out and has just generally looked like one of the top fighters in the category. And uh, Spencer Bennett's going to find this a lot tougher than his semi-final versus Wesley Janssen. Solomenikov is a very resilient fighter, but do not underestimate the punching power of Spencer Bennett. Yeah, I just think Spencer's style, he likes to take the fight to his opponents, and that's what you're going to have to do, especially against a Russian fighter. They're very strong, they like to advance, they like to hit down the middle, uh, and I think Spencer's got to try and stand his ground and really take the fight to him. And both men exchanging blow for blow here. Yes. Yeah. Bennett, Bennett there trying to roll kick of his own. Solomenikov's trademark knockout kick. But Spencer's showing that he's got some moves as well. Yeah, Spencer's doing well here. He's moving in, throwing techniques, throwing combinations, and then moving back out. He doesn't really want to stand there and trade blows all day. He wants to try and move around, but also be aggressive. And he's doing that just right at the moment. Some good low kicks by Bennett there. Solomenikov really just favouring the straight punches. Every one of Bennett's punches is going for oh. full power, really trying to put the pressure onto Solomenikov. Yeah, good attempt at a back kick there as well. And now Bennett's pushing him back, which is good. He just threw a good knee there. In close-knit finals, the fight will be awarded to the person that is the aggressor and is pushing forward and being the busier of the fighters. Yeah, I think Bennett knows this. He doesn't want to spend the whole time on the back foot while Solomenikov tries to push him forward. So he's really looking to move as forward as much as he can throughout the fight. And we see there Solomenikov caught Bennett with a high blow and is penalised with a first warning for that. No direct face punches are allowed. Some good low kicks there by Bennett, catches him with an inside and an outside low kick. Solomenikov here is trying to put a little bit of a spurt before the end of the round. But I don't think it will be enough for either of them to get a decision. There really has to be a significant aggressor, a very dominant competitor for this to be decided over a first round. Very, very rarely will a final of the two best fighters here today be decided in only two minutes. Yeah, this first round is pretty much these two fighters sizing each other up. Just to let you know as well, the final doesn't go to boards and also doesn't go to weight. So it has to go to decision, but it can go to four rounds. And as we expect, all the four judges, the corner judges, have crossed their flags, which indicates the draw. So we'll now advance to the second round. And the clock starts for two minutes for round two. This is where the conditioning, the fitness, the stamina, all starts to set in. Remember, it's been a long day for both these competitors, both having had four fights prior to this. Yeah, they would have picked up oh, a lot. Oh, and there's that, that kick that we were talking about, Alan. Yeah, that was a very good attempt by Solomenikov. Not far from hitting Bennett there, and I think Bennett moved his head just at the right moment. It's a matter of centimetres. If that was on the button, it's night-night for Spencer Bennett, but he's done very well. He's aware that Solomenikov has that special knockout kick. Yeah, he's knocked so many people out of that kick in, in the past. If you see him on YouTube, there's numerous clips of him knocking fighters out. But Bennett doing well to keep close to Solomenikov, to close down the range so that Solomenikov can't throw that special kick at the perfect range, which will almost definitely end in a knockout if it connects well. But Bennett doing well to keep the distance quite close so you can see it coming, being close for it, duck his head out of the way and evade it like he just did. Yeah, Bennett's doing well here. He's not backing off and he's still moving forward. You know, both fighters looking fairly even here. Just throwing out body punches and low kicks. No one really on top. But the conditioning of both these athletes is incredible. With the absorbing of these punches, you can see the redness of the chest starting to come up on Solomenikov, just showing what we said earlier that Spencer Bennett, not many lightweights can punch harder than this guy. Yeah, but Solomenikov, a tough, 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 resilient opponent. 
Get down to the last 30 seconds of this round here. Again, they're both going to try and put in a final surge in this round to get a decision. I think Selimonikov's trying to step it up, but Bennett's not really letting him here. Still picking him off, hitting him with some good low kicks. Again, blow for blow, both trading off. Swapping bunches of punches with the odd low kick thrown in. Both finishing the second round very strongly. I think we'll see another draw awarded and a third round extension. Yeah, they really had to dig deep there and they were both taking it to each other and neither of them wanted to back down. I'm predicting another draw here. I'd be surprised if it's anything but. Yeah, and as you said, four draws awarded. So we're going to see it's going to a third round. The British title at stake here. Spencer Bennett fighting in front of his home country. He's going to want to step it up now and really go for this. It's a good start in this round from Bennett. It's a few combinations and some good low kicks. I think he needs to use them. Both fighters really have to dig deep now, going to all their energy reserves. There's a title at stake. Yeah, Solomonikov's got a very powerful punch there. He's, he leads with his left and he's really hitting some hard punches to the chest. You've always got to be aware of his knockout techniques, especially that roll kick. But Bennett's not letting himself be bullied there. He's fighting back, giving as good as he's getting here. Yeah, Spencer's been around the block. He's fought some top fighters, so he knows how to fight against a fighter like this, and he's not going to back down. Both men trading off good punches here. You just get the feeling that Bennett's punches are taking a little bit more effect. Slightly stronger. Yeah, Solomonikov is looking a little bit more tired in this round than he has before. Just went for a good low kick there, though, Solomonikov. So he's certainly not backing down. But he looked to be breathing a bit heavier. A nice spinning back kick there from Bennett. Last 30 seconds of this round now. This is where they've really got to dig in. Oh, and Solomonikov has just caught Bennett with a face punch. Yeah, he could get a warning for that, which could, which could prove costly. He looks like he caught Bennett there fairly hard there, which is obviously a legal technique to punch to the face. And if a fight is this close, it could be the penalties that you've earned over the rounds that goes against you. We'll have to see how the referee and the judges... Yeah, Spencer seems all right there. I think it was just a bit of a, bit of a shot getting hit in the face then, and obviously an illegal technique. Four corner jugs is just being called in to discuss this just to see if they all saw it the same way as the referee did. And if they thought that it was a deliberate punch, he might get a Gentan itch, which is a severe warning which could go against Semenikov here in this final at the men's lightweight division. And as we thought, Solomenikov has been given a Gentan itch, which is a serious penalty which means that he really now needs to go all out or that could go against him. And Bennett knows this, so Bennett digging his heels in, throwing it back the punches, stepping up the pressure in the last 10 seconds of this final. If Bennett can hold out here, he might just get the championship to his name. Yeah, that bit of a break there gave these two fighters a bit of a breather then and they've really spurred them on. That's going to be close, but that illegal punch by Solomonikov could potentially prove the difference. It's in the hands of the judges. So we have two flags have been awarded a draw. Two flags have been awarded to Bennett. If the referee gives it to Bennett, which he has, Bennett is crowned the 2012 men's lightweight champion. A fantastic performance there from Spencer Bennett all day. He's had some hard fights and it's it's gone 10 o'clock this evening and he's just fighting a very hard final. And acknowledging his home support there, the people that travelled from Wales to London to follow their fight to Spencer Bennett. And it's a well-deserved championship title for Spencer Bennett of Wales. Men's lightweight joint third place, Yuri Chishokov from Yamburg IFK.
and Wesley Jansen from Iron Play Holland. In second place, uh, Eugene Simonkio from IFK Lamberg. And the winner of the men's lightweight class group, Spencer Bennett from Pico de San Juan.